Hey GP learners, have you ever thought about using Accurix as a software to help with System 1? Well, in this episode we're going to show you how to do that and I've got Ben Spiro from Accurix to take us through it. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Dr. Gandalf for EGP Learning where I look at supporting you, technology enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode we're going to have an in-depth look at something called Accurix. It's a software system you may have heard about recently and we're just going to show you exactly how you can use it for the benefit of your patients and your practice and how it may even save some workload for you. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? We're going to have a look at that, and Ben's going to walk us through it, if that's okay. Absolutely. Cool. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to contact me on whichever platform you prefer, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, social media as you prefer. If you're listening on the audio platforms, make sure you leave us a review on iTunes. And as always, if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to subscribe and leave a comment. I guarantee you'll get a reply. Anyway, let's get straight to the video, shall we? Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. Hey GP learners, so here we're going to show you how to use Accurix, a text messaging system that's partnered up with System 1 to basically help make your life a little bit easier and definitely work better with patients. And to show you how to do that, I've got Ben Spiro from Accurix with us. How are we doing Ben? I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yourself? I'm great actually, and I'm really keen to show this kind of product. Quick little message, um, I'm not at all affiliated with Accurix and stuff. Uh, I know that um, I'm a big fan of it and people will definitely hear about this. Um, but I just wanted to make that part clear and I just wanted to show you guys what this system can do. So in order to do that, I'm going to hand over to Ben, who's going to be driving today. Thanks very much. So I thought I'd say a bit about what Accurix is to begin with. I'll show you the features and some questions got submitted ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through those together as well. So what is Accurix? It's a free add-on to System 1 that improves individual patient messaging. So there's some new features in that, like patients being able to respond in a structured way and those responses being automatically saved and coded after a few. And also hopefully some kind of like nice to have upgrades on familiar features, like longer message limits, mm -hmm. uh, a load of default um, presets or templates, you can generate NHS UK advice links. You can delay messages sent in the evening until the following morning. Just some things to make life a little bit easier. Okay. Should we see it in action? Definitely. So uh, those, this is uh, System 1. And the thing that's a little bit different here is this little green toolbar, and that's Accurix. So this message icon in the middle is where we'll spend most of our time. And when we click that, the patient's name, NHS number, date of birth, consent code, and mobile number are all brought in automatically. There are two types of message you can send through Accurix. Mm -hmm. One-way messages and messages that patients can respond to. Okay. So our name for those uh, like surveys that patients can respond to is Flory. And if we click on here, and then let's choose one like COPD, then we'll see that the message fills in automatically. And at the end here, a unique link is going to be generated for the patient. When the patient follows that link, mm -hmm. they then put in their date of birth to confirm it's them. But they don't need to kind of set up an account or do any sign in. Okay. They answer all the standard questions. At the end of the survey, then they, they can then hit submit. Mm -hmm. So me and uh, Dr. Gandhi sent one to ourselves a little bit earlier. And when we just click submit on that, we'll see that this little notification icon pops up. Yep. And that lets us know that a response has come in. Okay. So then when we click on that and then follow it through the COPD, Let's say we sent out a bunch of messages today and got a load of replies tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This works as a kind of a communal inbox. So all the replies will be a different row here. We can review the results and click save to record. And then once we've clicked save to record, we can see that the responses and all the relevant codes go into system one automatically. Awesome. So hopefully just a fair bit more useful. Definitely. And I guess the key thing there is it's coded information. So for quaff side of things, it's a great thing. And also you've got that information to review. So if you've got a patient that you think actually doesn't seem to be coping quite well. Um, asthma is a great example for that, I guess. Um, you can think, mm, probably need to get them in for a review sooner. Or actually, if they're okay, you know, classically they're working well, or a community we sometimes struggle to engage with some of this, and actually they can do this quickly and conveniently. They're fine, we can just continue managing them because they're okay. Sounds awesome to me. Absolutely, hopefully saves everyone's time, makes everyone's life a bit easier. Fingers crossed. So we've seen the flurry kind of question there. Um, I guess there's the direct patient, patient messaging and stuff, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can also send uh, messages. So uh, as well as the kind of the standard survey templates, mm -hmm. you can also be a bit more flexible with it as well. Okay. So if you were gonna call the patient to ask them a question, mm -hmm. rather than do that, you could just type them the question in a text. And then there's a new feature we're working on, so it might look a little bit different in a couple of weeks. Uh, but there's this little checkbox here saying attach patient response link. Mm -hmm. And that's a single use response link where you can ask the question, patient anything. Mm -hmm. Same as before, they get a unique link, they can follow that, they can type out that response, click submit, you get notified, and then if you want to, you can save that to the record. Okay. And that's a single use link, so it doesn't kind of, once the patient's answered that question, mm -hmm. 
it's not a kind of a free open access, you know, okay. um, which could be quite a lot to manage. Yeah. As well as um, quest, uh, messages that patients can respond to, we've also got one-way messages. Mm -hmm. So these can either be free typed down here, or we've got a library of default templates that mm -hmm. our clinical lead developed with some of our early practices. So let's pick one here, like the cervical smear invitation, and we'll see that when we click on that, the message pre-fills automatically, which mm -hmm. we could edit if we like to, and also the uh, SNOMED code is added as well, yep. which will go into system one as a read code or a CTV3 code. Mm -hmm. We've got those default templates that kind of are straight out of the box, mm -hmm. and you can also make your own custom templates as an individual or as a practice as well. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of these custom templates. So some of you may have seen that ping up when Ben was showing us, but if I go to one of ours, as you can see, I've created a few for Wellspring Surgery, and we've got some interesting ones here in terms of, so um, we do telephone triage at our practice, um, and being able to send the patients the self-referral details that they need, for example, to get themselves involved with the IAP services, um, really quick and easy, saves them having to come into the practice or saying I've lost it because generally they don't lose their phones and stuff. Similarly, self-referral physiotherapy for simple musculoskeletal stuff. And the other one that I've really started like using lately, um, so some of our EGP learners will remember I've done a review on something called uh, When Should I Worry? It's um, effectively a leaflet, which sounds kind of a bit boring, not really techy, but um, one of the cool things is if you've got patients with minor illnesses and particularly concerned about their children and stuff, I love being able to give them this leaflet to help give them that information as when to come back to the practice when they do need to worry, hence the name. Um, and it's really effective. And um, through this, I've created uh, basically PDF links that can send the leaflet to the patient. So they've got it on the phone with them all the time. And they've kind of had some understanding about how to use it and they've got the information. And as you can see, you've got some in English and got some in other languages as well. Um, that we can use and send to patients to help encourage that self-care aspect of things. And for that, awesome. Love it. Really has saved a lot of time and printing costs because I don't have to print the leaflets anymore. So yay, that will benefit. Absolutely. And as well as uh, these kind of costs, um, so since the templates are a bit longer, it's mm. 700 character limit. Yeah. You can absolutely add your own links in yeah. your own custom templates, mm. kind of get those out. You can also generate NHS UK advice links as well. Yeah. So we were talking about how we can avoid and you can give out leaflets. Yep. We're on Minnie Mouse here, and if Minnie was having some knee pain, we can just search knee pain here, mm -hmm. click on that, and we'll see that this NHS UK advice link is automatically yep. generated at the bottom, mm -hmm. and those update automatically, so we're always getting yeah. this uh, up-to-date ones. Again, a massive thing for patient education and stuff, so when we're telephone triaging patients, I'll say similar, look, it sounds like you've got this, I'm gonna send you a leaflet, here's some extra information about it, and it's linked to the NHS.UK website, which is a trusted and reliable source. Many of our EGP learners will also know I'm a massive tech geek, love our apps and stuff, so I will often send patients to the website links to the various apps, things like Sleepio, things like Headspace, that kind of stuff, and say, here's the link, you can download it if you want to. If you don't want to, fine, it's your choice, but you've got the details, and it, it codes that as well, so then the records show that you've sent that information to the patient. And the fact that it doesn't have this text message limit link that we do in system one, in the basic one, so much easier to use. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to hit the 700 unless you're planning on writing essays to patients, which to be honest, you probably should be calling them if that's the case in my view. Um, but yeah, so we've seen some really cool functions there. I believe all this stuff that we talked about so far is completely free. That's correct. Yeah. Every feature I've shown at the moment is free and always will be free. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of a premium version of Accurix and I'll okay. show you some of those features off the bat as well. I kind of want to address that. And something we get here all the time is like, this seems like it's maybe too good to be true. Mm -hmm. There's some hidden costs. What's the kind of okay. future look like? So just to reiterate, completely free to use, completely free to download. No hidden costs always will be free. Mm -hmm. We're going to be making other paid products in the future. And those paid products are going to link together primary and secondary care providers. Mm -hmm. And so the kind of story there is that to build a communication product, we need users. Yep. And step one of that is building something that um, GPs find really useful mm -hmm. and kind of start using. Um, so that these other products can be as valuable as possible. Okay, so I guess we, one of that products is this pathway thing that I can see here. So should we have a look at that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is another type of one-way message, uh, and this can be sent over a se uh, automatically schedule a series of messages over days or weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's really useful for things like lifestyle nudges and also for reminders. Mm -hmm. So we've got some uh, some default ones here. Um, if we look at say the two-week wait referral reminder we can see that one message is gonna go out today, mm -hmm. which says, I've referred you to the hospital specialist clinic. You should receive an appointment within two weeks. A week and a half later, we say automatically, as discussed on the 4th of March, 2020, when this video is being recorded, you should have received an appointment for your specialist clinic. If not, please contact reception so we can follow up on this. Thanks, Dr. Kelly. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's an awesome mechanism and um, particularly a lot of our practices. So we're coming up towards the end of this um, financial year from April onwards, the quaff changes and part of the quaff that comes through in that is this concept of better cancer screening and awareness. Um, and I think having this mechanism will really help practices kind of tick one of the boxes of that quaff QI because it is about trying to make sure that you've got good mechanisms in place to follow up patients in terms of their cancer referrals. So definitely your two week wait, easily done with this. I guess the other cohort I'm quite interested in looking at having a similar system for is those ones that you think may have something to be worried about. And you're not always sure if they will come back or if they will do the test and that kind of stuff. Having a similar mechanism doesn't specifically say the two week wait part, but says that you, you know, you send the first one, here's the details of how to get your blood tests and tests done. Mm. Second one in a couple of weeks time, just a reminder to check that you have actually booked your tests and stuff to make sure that they're done. And we, you're planning your review with myself in due time and you can phrase that how you want and stuff and maybe worth having a chat with your practice but that's definitely something i'm looking at doing to help sort out the quaff qi for the coming year for our practice and for our network so definitely keen that that's a cool system to use fantastic yeah so we've kind of seen some of the, the features and stuff i know common question that people ask is about the whole data security mm. gdpr all that kind of stuff both from a patient perspective and from a practice perspective yeah, can you answer some of those questions for us? Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, information governments and GDPR is something we take very seriously. Um, we're NHS Digital Accredited. We've got all the appropriate assurances, and we've got template DPIAs and DPAs as well, okay. which we can absolutely share with practices. Um, in terms of a GDPR perspective, when you text a patient, the basis of communication is provision of medical care. So although the ICO says that explicit consent isn't needed, mm -hmm. as best practice, we'd still encourage communication preferences and mm -hmm. contact details mm -hmm. to be checked at every patient interaction. So often with these kind of one, uh, targeted messages that go through Acrix, mm -hmm. there will have been a patient interaction, like in consultation on the phone. Mm -hmm. Those are great opportunities to check. We've also got materials on our website, like posters. Yep. So those can go up in the waiting room. And it just lets patients know, like, please make sure that you're giving us the most up-to-date contact yep. details. And if you've opted in, then um, uh, SMS might be the way we talk with you. Sure. We also bring in the consent codes as well. Yeah. So this uh, green bar at the yeah. top there, it says a patient's consented to receiving SMS messages. Okay. If the patient has opted out of SMS messages, mm -hmm. that bar will be a really visible red color. Okay. And when you click send and save, a pop-up's going to come up saying, okay. this patient's opted out. Are you sure you want to go ahead? Okay. If the patient's in the room with you and is like, really wants that information on their phone, like it's mm -hmm. a leaflet, they might say yes, and it'd be appropriate to push that message through. Sure. But it's really obvious that that's something that the patient's opted out on. So, And I guess that's something that you just then change the consent code because the patient's now <coughs> given you consent. And it might be for one that one-off message, yeah. or it might be for future, but absolutely, yeah. Cool. Um, and I guess one of the other things that often is asked, particularly in the group, and there's a repeated question, is that, so there's Acurix, and then there's other companies like MJOG and iPlato, you know, What's the difference? Why is there a difference? You know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're designed to be used together. So Acurix is for individual messages, like the ones that you'd send through system ones internally, what internal messaging before. Mm -hmm. MDOG is great for automated and batch messaging. And then Acurix hopefully enhances that on top okay. of it. So it's not designed to be a replacement. A lot of our users use batch messaging services like MDOG and iPlato. Mm -hmm. They're two different solutions and they're designed to go together. Okay. So will we see Acrix move into batch messaging? Because then I guess potentially it means perhaps you can just use one system rather than two. Or... Yeah, we definitely see the benefit on that. Um, luckily, since Acrix is quite quick to set up and mm -hmm. doesn't need any training because it's quite intuitive, it's not as big a problem. Well, people find that it's fairly intuitive and easy to mm -hmm. use the two side by side. To answer your question, will Acurix do batch messaging? Mm. Never say never. Okay. At the moment, we're really excited about filling unmet needs and we mm. see that unmet need in connecting different care providers. Okay. So a lot of the stuff we're working on at the moment is connecting primary and secondary care. And so that's where we're kind of we're chasing there. Mm -hmm. We're doing all sorts of things like that at the moment. For example, being able to email um, secondary care providers mm -hmm. and have that email chain saved to the patient record in a smart way. Okay. That's the kind of thing we're working on at the moment. We're also making improvements to chain SMS itself. Mm -hmm. So things like mm -hmm. that uh, single use response link and also being able to securely attach documents via SMS. Okay. We see that as much more of an unmet need. So that's really exciting where we're going for. Mm -hmm. Never say never on batch messaging and automated messaging, but just want to be upfront. That's probably not something we'll be seeing in 2020. Okay, 
So hopefully I watch this space and a little bit by the sounds of it of a sneak peek of what's coming through for chain SMS users and stuff in the coming future as well. So that stuff about secondary care, yeah, massively big fan of that, I think. And you know, secondary care being able to have better communication with patients in this kind of mechanism, I think would be awesome. Imagine the number of outpatient appointments we could save by having better messaging with patients and stuff. I mean, we get so much of it through our dentist. This kind of system would work really well, I think, in secondary care as well. So keen to see how that develops. Cool. So um, you mentioned about the fact that there's the free and the premium kind of thing. Mm. How much does that premium kind of mechanism cost if practices were looking at using, obviously, the, the higher end stuff? So we've made it as cheap as we possibly can. Okay. So it's just the raw cost of the SMS. So like I say, in the future, um, uh, the paid products are going to be through the secondary care. So mm -hmm. we're not interested in you know squeezing every penny out of chain SMS. Okay. So it's that raw cost of the SMS. It's that one and a half P per message fragment. Mm -hmm. So for a practice of list size, 10,000, that usually works out between per year, 120 pounds, 180 pounds. Okay. And that's done at a CCG level as well. Okay. So if you're interested in that, um, put us in touch with your CCG. Mm -hmm. The best thing, the single best thing you can do is that we know that CCGs tend to go for the extra features when more practices are using it. Mm -hmm. So tell other practices, we can present at your PCN or we've got some materials for you to present. So I'd say, yeah, getting uptake is step one. Mm -hmm. And then once kind of like more of your uh, CCG is using us, get in contact with us. Um, we're quite used to speaking with CCGs and kind of like answering those questions, helping them put together a business case and working out whether the kind of like paid version of Accurix is right for them. So yeah, get other practices using us, get in touch with us and we can help them out with that. Awesome. So it sounds like a really good and simple system to use pretty cost effective i mean you know 120 odd quid a year is not a lot of money for being able to have better patient communication and potentially may even pay for itself with the cloth benefits that you get from tackling some of those hardest to reach patient populations and that kind of stuff i know that's something we're definitely focusing on with our kind of challenging and, and, and population that we have and stuff i'm a massive fan as people probably have figured out I, I love this kind of system and i've only had proper access to it for about a couple of weeks and i've already used it tons <laughs> far too much i think possibly but it, it just seems so much more intuitive to me than what i've currently had which is the system one um interface unfortunately um and i think it just allows so much more even simply just that message limit alone is the key thing for me so i really appreciate it and um, i guess one quick little question if i can yeah so course, um yeah. where do you think is the best place to put the accurate tab oh what a great question um, <laughs> I'd actually love to hear in the comments below. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it does, we can do a kind of a pin the pin the accurate toolbar on the uh, system one screen. Yeah. Um, when I use it, uh, I tend to similar to where you are somewhere in the top right hand corner. Um, for this demo, we moved it to the left a bit so that you could still see our faces. Yeah. Um, often like just over here. Yeah. Um, somewhere in the top half around there. Um, have a play with it. See where it goes best. Those Definitely. three dots on the left are just for moving around the screen. Cool. So it can be um, flexible on that. And definitely, so I'll be keen to know what IEGP learners think. Those that have been using Accurix, wh where do you pin the toolbar? I'd, I'd be quite keen to hear what, what you're thinking and stuff. And, you know, is there somewhere better that you found to host it um, just to make life a little bit easier? Because obviously we've got one. Uh, so I normally use two screens. You guys can't really see that. So my documents come up on the other one. Less of an issue. But if you've only got one and documents ping up, then yeah, okay, sometimes it could be an issue. Cool. Anyway. Thank you guys for keeping uh, with us to, for this episode. I hope you found it really useful. And thank you to Ben for joining us to show us this kind of system. I know you've got lots of cool things coming as well. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of next steps as well, I, I always feel a bit unsure about speaking about Accurix because I'm from Accurix and, and that's a bit loaded. So I'd say if, if it looks interesting, look us up on Practice Index, speak with other practices that use us. Mm -hmm. If you want to try it out as well, really is quite easy to do. So you can just go to our website. Literally, we, we, we got set up before. It takes about five minutes to yeah. get going. Try it on a dummy patient. If you decide it's not for you, no harm done. It can just be uninstalled. Mm -hmm. If you do like it, have a play around with yourself on a, uh, with it on a dummy patient. Set up a couple of GPs, a couple of receptionists. See what they think. And if mm -hmm. they're excited, pretty easy to roll up to the practice. And like mm -hmm. I say, fairly intuitive. So it doesn't need any training mm -hmm. and doesn't feel like another system to think about. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And all those links that Ben mentioned, I'll stick those in the show notes. So if you want to have a look down below, you'll be able to see the links to the various things. I know you guys have also previewed some videos that go through some of these features in a little bit more detail. So again, the links to, to that channel will be there as well for you to have a look at if you want to. Again, thank you for joining us, Ben. I've really enjoyed this. I love the product. Massively, massively recommend it. And we did do a live version of this for our System One Facebook users groups uh, kind of thing to show how it's effective because EMIS users have had this for about two years, which I'm 
I'm slightly jealous of them about actually. And, and I know one of the reasons why I managed to get Ben here is because I kept bugging Atrix saying, when you're doing system one, when you're doing system one. So really appreciate you guys spending some time to show us how it works and stuff. As always, guys, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to contact me, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever platform you prefer. If you're listening on the podcast, feel free to leave us a review on iTunes. We'd love it if you could do that. And definitely, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, ring the bell to make sure you get all of our content first and foremost. And leave a comment. I guarantee you'll get a reply. And as always, we're here to help save you and your patients' time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.